The rapid expansion of new treatment options for patients with squamous cell carcinoma of the lung raises many questions regarding optimal treatment choice and sequencing in individual patients. This review article focuses on the evidence supporting targeting the ERB-B signaling cascade in this setting. Over the last decade, a number of druggable molecular alterations have been identified in patients with non-small cell lung cancer, leading to the development of effective targeted therapies. The most prominent of these alterations are EGFR mutations, which are effectively targeted by the EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitors allotinib and gefitinib, and the ERB-B family blocker afatinib. However, these mutations are predominantly identified in patients with non-squamous forms of the disease. In the 20 to 30 percent of non-small cell lung cancer patients displaying squamous cell histology, EGFR and other ERB B family gene mutations are rare, occurring in only 2 to 6 percent of cases. Thus, physicians have not routinely considered EGFR targeted therapy in this subset, and personalized medicine has remained an area of unmet medical need. However, there is strong evidence that EGFR and the wider ERB-B family of receptors, including HER2, ERB-B3 and ERB-B4, are implicated in the pathogenesis of squamous cell carcinoma of the lung. For example, 60 to 80% of cases exhibit EGFR protein expression, and 20 to 30% exhibit HER2 and ERB-B3 expression. In this context, the ERB-B family blocker of fatinib is an orally available approved therapy for both non-squamous and squamous non-small cell lung cancer. A fatinib irreversibly inhibits signaling from all ERB-B receptors, impacting proliferation and survival of cancer cells. This broader mechanism of action is distinct from other EGFR-targeted agents, such as allotinib and gefitinib, which only inhibit signaling from the EGFR receptor. The clinical activity of afatinib in patients with squamous cell carcinoma of the lung was recently evaluated in the Phase 3 Lux Lung 8 trial, the largest prospective study to be undertaken in this setting. Patients with locally advanced or metastatic squamous cell carcinoma of the lung, which had progressed on or after first-line chemotherapy, received treatment with either afatinib or allotinib. In this trial, afatinib demonstrated significant improvements compared with allotinib across a range of clinical endpoints, including progression-free survival, overall survival, and tumor response rate. Afatinib was also associated with a predictable and manageable safety profile with a low discontinuation rate and provided improvements in specific lung cancer-related symptoms and global health status. In addition to afatinib, the emergence of immunotherapies as new treatment options for squamous cell carcinoma of the lung has significantly changed the treatment landscape for patients with this disease raising questions among physicians regarding optimal treatment choice and sequence. Selection of treatment will depend on numerous factors, including biomarker identification and reported efficacy outcomes, the treatment safety profile and consideration of patient comorbidities, impact on disease-related symptoms and overall quality of life, as well as mode of administration and other cost-related issues, among other factors. For the first time, the future of treatment for patients with squamous cell carcinoma of the lung looks increasingly promising, and we look forward with optimism to further developments in the coming years.